Other than ball pythons, leopard geckos are the animal that everyone seems to ask about when they can't get it to eat. So today I just want to go over some tips to get your leopard gecko that refuses to eat anything to actually get it to start chowing down. The very first technique is very simple because the majority of people that ask why their gecko will not eat are people that just got the animal a number of days ago. It's extremely common for an animal that's brand new to a home not to be settled in yet because it has to get adjusted to the home, get used to you, get used to the area, the new scents, the new uh, stuff in the enclosure. It's a completely new thing. And so although a lot of animals really enjoy the enrichment of a brand new space they can explore, leopard geckos I found tend to be a species that just prefer to kind of stay the same and not change too much. So for that reason, they often take a bit longer to get used to their home and they might not start eating on day one like a lot of other animals. Like usually when I think of a lizard, they're just like easy, like a bearded dragon say, even though they have plenty of difficult aspects in their husbandry, it's pretty rare to get a bearded dragon that just refuses to eat anything. Even if it eats unhealthy stuff like fruit or whatever, you can get it to eat something. But leopard geckos on the other hand, just won't even acknowledge the food. And this often happens for the first number of days or weeks. Now a very simple explanation of uh, basically saying, ooh. First of all, when you're looking at your leopard gecko, uh, there's some pretty simple ways to tell whether it is over or underweight, which that's not what this video is about. But basically their plump tail is where all of their nutrition is, and as long as they're not building up fat deposits in other places, then this tail can just be as big as it needs to be. And so when your gecko is not eating, it has a lot of nutrition stored in that tail that it can lose over time. Something I've noticed with leopard geckos is just how individualized their metabolism is and how quickly or slowly they lose weight. So we've cared for about 25 leopard geckos so far, and there are some that lose weight very quickly within just, if they don't eat for like a week, you can easily tell, even if you don't see them that often. It's just as soon as you see them, you're like, wow, they've lost a lot of weight. But there's also been some that have not eaten for a very long time, which I'll talk about why, but they did not lose any weight, basically anything for months. So my point in mentioning that is, although it's good to be concerned when your animal's not eating, it's also okay not to completely panic because it's very easy to tell with leopard geckos whether they're underweight or not. And you're gonna notice pretty quickly because it's all just right there. It's like a little tail meter. Like you just know if that thing is plump and voluptuous and beautiful and squishy, don't squeeze it. But if it's nice and big, you know you've got time until it runs out. It's kind of just like a gas tank or something. Like you can very easily tell. And then same thing when it's very small or thin. If it's looking like a crested gecko tail, you're having some problems. It might be on the brink of death. That's why it's very concerning when a gecko loses his tail, which although no leopard geckos have lost their tails here, we've gotten geckos that lost them like days or weeks before we pick them up. And so you just have to be super careful and super tedious because that's where all of their nutrition was and they can very rapidly become unhealthy. So I got kind of off on a tangent, but basically if you just got your leopard gecko, it's fine. Even if it doesn't eat for a few days or even a few weeks, that's okay. Usually what we do is once geckos have hit like the one week mark, that's when we start really trying things to see why it will not eat. And the second biggest reason other than not waiting long enough for the animal to settle in is it simply doesn't like the insect you're giving it. They're complete insectivores, no plants, no like rodents. Even though they can technically eat like a little pinky here and there, it's really not part of their diet. Um, so stick to insects and people will tell you different types of insects to feed them. Um, because everyone kind of argues over what's the healthiest or what's the easiest or the safest. Um, and we do all sorts of insects here. Most commonly, we feed dubia roaches, but we also have a lot of mealworms. Superworms are around, waxworms, hornworms. I just order everything, like, all the time. Only thing we never have is crickets, because crickets suck. Nobody here likes crickets. <laughs> they're not unhealthy. They keep your animal alive, but they're just a pain. And there's way easier alternatives that are just a little more expensive or cheaper if you go with like mealworms. But no matter what you're feeding your leopard gecko, it may just simply not have a taste for it. They are crazy picky, just like me. But the other weird thing is they change their preferences. This is what I did not expect when getting the leopard geckos. Um, like other lizards here, like bearded dragons, I know which beardy likes which fruit. I know what my blue tongue skink likes. I know what the iguana likes. And it's very consistent. It just like this one likes strawberries the most. This one likes banana. Um, this one likes dandelion greens, that's its favorite. But leopard geckos very often change, and it's happened with a lot here. As an example, Goldie, which is my other leopard gecko, I got him in 2014, and when I got him, he came with a bunch of superworms for free, because that's what he was being fed. Um, I kept feeding the superworms, 14-year-old me, got some plants, 
that turns out it was poisonous for the superworms. So I killed the entire superworm colony. Now, it's good to keep in mind, whatever you feed your superworm, you're also feeding to your gecko. So only feed stuff that's safe and healthy for reptiles in general. Again, that's aside the point. I killed all the superworms. So I had to get some new insects and I ended up going with, I think mealworms at the time, but he really just did not want them. Superworms and mealworms are extremely similar, but they were not similar enough for him. So thankfully, eventually he did start taking them, but then all of a sudden, he just stopped taking mealworms. Uh, he didn't eat for a number of weeks, but eventually I just made the realization that he just didn't want mealworms anymore. And it turns out he wanted, cr I think it was crickets at the time. Uh, and then he ended up switching back to superworms and then back to mealworms. And now he's on dubias. One time he refused dubia, so I had to go back to mealworms. And now he's on dubias again. So he's a little less picky now. He does eat multiple insects, but there are those that are not as have as big of a taste palette as Goldie. We rehome and work with a lot of animals. Some are rescues, some just need new homes uh, and are perfectly healthy from the start. And one perfectly healthy gecko we got, it was the seventh animal we ever got, was another leopard gecko and it wouldn't eat anything. Uh, we didn't know what it was eating before, but we had all the insects here. We had basically every insect except for superworms and crickets because we just preferred mealworms and dubia roaches. We offered him everything for months and months and months constantly, and he wasn't losing any weight. Uh, so we weren't like concerned for his health. He was doing super well. And I had other uh, insects hanging around like wax worms and all sorts of, th we had all sorts of things and we just never bothered getting super worms. Um, but then finally, we just happened to have some super worms, offered it to him after months of him not eating and he took one. Turns out he only ate super worms and he ate them from that point forward. Crazy good appetite, like he, had, like he had been eating superworms every day for the entire year when he had not eaten anything for so long, longer than I've ever seen any leopard gecko go, but he barely lost any weight. And the weight that he did lose, he gained back in like a few weeks or something, maybe a month, because he was eating superworms so well. So when we sold them, we had to make sure the owner knew, like we're being serious, he won't eat anything but superworms. And we really like, like, do you understand? He's not gonna switch. We've tried for months. Just super worms, okay? So long story short, he didn't like anything but super worms. So the second reason is they simply are not a fan of the insect you're offering and they can change that preference. So even if you find what they like, they might stop eating and start eating something else, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because variety is great with reptiles. It's a form of enrichment. It doesn't, it keeps them from being bored. And you could always give them multiple insects. You could do like a, a trail mix of insects. They might start eating each other, actually. <laughs> I know some insects kind of eat each other. You could have like a plate, like platters, just like put five bowls in their enclosure, do a bunch of insects, why not? It doesn't hurt. Uh, <laughs> so if you wanna do that, you can. I wanna make a video about that now, that'd be cool. And so my, my, the only downside of this is the fact that you do have to buy lots of different insects and you might like not be able to source them. I usually order insects online. Sometimes I have to run to Petco if I run out um, and they're not in the mail fast enough, which by the way, you can use my code or my link in the description for 10% off dbriches.com. And if you're a new buyer, I get $5 in credit. So yay, you feed the insects. I mean, you feed the reptiles insects. You give me money and then I feed the reptiles insects and you get insects too. But basically, uh, sometimes I have to just run into Petco and grab something. But I've realized Petco doesn't have a huge selection. They only have like three or four different insects, and mine at least. So yeah, you, you might have some trouble with this, but that's the second reason. And the third that I found is they are not a fan of what you are supplementing the insects with. Uh, hopefully, if you have leopard geckos, you're aware of the supplements that people suggest. Um, I did a video on their care where I went over how I supplement them. But long story short, ideally the insects will be, have uh, calcium and multivitamins on them. And these, if you smell them, they have a pretty strong smell. Just don't smell them too much because you might snort them and it's like powder and it, it probably won't feel good. I don't know why I'm adding that. Not, not that I've done it or anything. But because they have a strong smell, you can just assume that they have a strong taste too. Uh, and some leopard geckos just don't like the taste. They'll lick them and they'll be like, yuck, that's, that's gross. I'm not eating that. I'm not gonna be healthy. I'm not taking my Flintstones gummies. They're not good enough. Those are really good though. Uh, but theirs don't taste like Flintstones gummies, Flintstones, and they might not like them. Now, the problem is ideally your animal will be getting these. Uh, so my main suggestion would be to just take them off at first 
if they're eating the insect without it. Although that's not perfect because they should be getting their multivitamin and stuff, at least they're actually eating something. And then from here, you can maybe try and put calcium or multivitamins on a couple of the insects, like in their enclosure, or you could like in the bowl, like sort the insects separately, put some with, some without, and kind of just trick them into eating it and hopefully they'll realize that it's really not that bad. Also calcium is something that you can just completely separate into a bowl, because usually geckos will know, larva geckos specifically, when they have a calcium deficiency and they'll literally just lick it out of the bowl. So for some reason, they maybe they eat it out of the bowl, but not on the insects. Usually they seem to just either like it or not, which if they do, you could always try different brands of vitamins. I haven't done this myself, but they are different manufacturers and they might have different tastes to them. I usually go with the um, Herptivite or the Zoomed vitamins, but that's also just a matter of finding a taste that they like if they aren't a fan of what you're mixing on. Uh, also, maybe they only like one of them. So you could try and just one day just put those, the other day put nothing, and then just eventually kind of trick them into eating them if you just occasionally pop them on a couple. That's kind of what I had to do to trick my turtle into eating plants. I had to get plants that kind of looked like pellets, like cut up leaves so they're like pellet shape, and then trick them and realize it's actually not that bad. So basically the third tip is to see if it's something with the multivitamin or uh, calcium as to why they're refusing the food. Now, the fourth reason I have is that you might be feeding those freeze-dried insects. I just have a grudge against these. I mean, I think it's partially justified, but I also just, they just seem so lazy of like an owner. <laughs> I mean, I get you need to be like efficient and save money, but really freeze-dried insects for an animal that's eating insects? Like, why? I don't, so, okay. Now, I, I don't, I haven't done a ton of research on these. I don't believe they're as healthy. I can't imagine they are because they're literally frozen and dried, which are two processes that deteriorate food and take out the nutrition. So although I don't actually know all the details on whether it's how, like how safe it is or how healthy it is, uh, which you can refer to the comments if you know about that. Uh, but basically, leopard geckos are, they're not gonna eat them. I've heard of like two leopard geckos eating them in my life. <laughs> They don't move. There's nothing that seems food-like to a leopard gecko, although it may have a tiny bit of scent even after being dried out. It's, it, they, they look for those moving things. So very simple fourth reason is you might just be feeding freeze-dried. Get some live ones. If your family doesn't want live in the house or if you don't want live, then you're stuck because <laughs> uh, that is kind of a necessity. Now, okay, this is coming from someone that doesn't really like bugs. I mean, I do not like them. I just don't understand them and I'm kind of scared of them. But once you have them for a bit, you get used to them. Like I started having to, like I had to hold a super worm with a tong, with I guess two tongs, a tong? Is it, is it a tong or tongs? I had to hold my insects with tongs no matter what. I still prefer it that way, but now I am comfortable enough to where like, if I see one on the floor, I can just pick it up. Yes, I kind of flick it into its enclosure <laughs> because I don't want to touch it for too long. <laughs> Basically, you, you kind of get over it. If your family's not a fan, just sneak them into the house. <laughs> and then the fifth reason is the size of the insect might just be freaking your gecko out. Nobody wants to try and kill something with your mouth when it's the size of your head. Uh, yes, I guess snakes do that. And maybe turtles and some lizards. Basically, if this insect's too large, your, your leopard gecko might either not see it as food uh, or it'll just be too scared or too intimidated to bite into it. So basically my personal rule is trying to feed geckos, leopard geckos specifically, insects that are half the size of their head or smaller. So for this, it could be eating like a medium or large dubia, a full size uh, mealworm or something, a smallish superworm, which it can eat bigger uh, because I know that this one will, but they won't all. So like if you give your leopard gecko a roach that's the size of its head or even a little bigger, it might try and bite it, it might have some trouble because it's too big to fit in its mouth, which it could kind of crush it up, but it might just not eat it because it's too large. Or maybe it is the quantity. Maybe it's, you filled the bowl up to the brim, so it's just like a swamp of insects. Like just try a couple at a time. Uh, we bowl feed. Okay, she's still there. <laughs> we always bowl feed the geckos, but you could also try tong feeding and see if uh, it's not a fan of bowls or a fan of tongs. So you could try bowl feeding if you are trying to tong feed. So like I said, we've cared for a few dozen leopard geckos now, and those are the three things that have always worked for us. Uh, there's nothing been past that, but it's possible you're still stuck after trying all this stuff. Uh, in which case, that's all I got. <laughs> you can check the comments. If you have any tips that I did not mention in this, feel free to link them below. So those are my tips on getting your gecko to eat. Again, 
It's very easy to tell when a leopard gecko is on the verge of death because their tail really helps you out, assuming they're dying from starvation and not something else. Uh, so just keep an eye on that tail. Remember to weigh your gecko. It really helps out if you keep track of the weight so you can get a scale on Amazon for like $5, maybe $10. Uh, and that really helps to just see how your gecko is doing. If you want the full care guide, you can check that out. I have that link below or go to goherpy.com slash leopardgeckos. And I'll leave all of my supplies that I use with my leopard gecko in the description. Those are Amazon affiliate links. So I get money when you buy the stuff and I can buy more animals and fill my addiction.